Hey yo Islanders, welcome back to another episode of Islander Robotics. As always, I'm Will and I actually have a lot of stuff, a lot of interesting stuff planned out for today's video. But before we actually get to the main gist of today's video, I just want to say thank you to all my subscribers. You're all truly awesome and I honestly cannot believe that this that this community has grown to over 100 subscribers. Thank you all so much for becoming part of the Islander community. And for those people that are, that are still on the cusp on whether or not they should consider joining, please do because on this channel we teach each other robotics through programming as well as our channel's new goal is to actually hit 1,000 subscribers. And with all that being said, what today's video is going to be all about is Python exceptions. More, well, actually, since I'm in the corner and we have the terminal up on the screen, why don't I just come over to here, I type in Python, three main dot pi for those of you that don't know what i'm talking about with the code well essentially on this channel we're going through a series where we're going to be well we're creating a youtube keyword planner and what i'm doing right here is actually calling or well, running that file well the main file if you don't know what i'm talking about there's actually a playlist and the link to that playlist should be popping up on the screen right about now please do consider hitting that button so that you can get redirected and get fully caught up but I'm just gonna hit run right now there's two main things I don't like about this code right about now and I know I said in last video we'll be doing some cool stuff with Colorama but I really just want to make this code as nice as I want to make the code nice right now so that we don't have to backtrack later to make these changes one thing I don't like that's not exceptions is that this this the codes kind of very cluttery and I think that we should have a function that clears the screen that's not really exceptions like I just said the exceptions is going to be when this question right here is asking for an input value of an integer alright so if I run a character it's gonna cause an error so what we're actually going to do is call well we're gonna use the Python exceptions to essentially allow Python to view these errors and make corrections to the code so that the Pyth so that the code can keep on running the important thing is that you can never guarantee what your user is going to enter so therefore you have to have backup plans upon backup plans to make sure that your code can still successfully operate even though that your user is causing input values that your code doesn't exactly understand all right so with all that being said why don't you sit back relax with your favorite snack while we go into a time lapse of us creating this code so let us go on to this new roller coaster ride shall we Islanders, so we're back and this is the code that we're able to come up with but before we actually go over today's code I just want to say the interpretation of how to actually process this code or how to actually implement this code is all up to my preference if you were there are many ways to actually implement this code it's all based on preference and just with that being said we're gonna continue on today's code just remember today's code is not the only way to actually solve the issues that we're trying to solve so on line one we have a doc string and what a doc string is is more of a it's an, a way for programmers to communicate on what's going on within their modules and when you actually import this so if I were to go to the main file it's you actually do have the ability to check out what the class actually do, or the module actually does as well as you're able to do the same thing on the kite AI autocomplete and it's just a really nice way to allow essentially your people to understand what what's going on in your code and then the other two on line one and two you don't really have to worry about but those are actually um, pre-installed Python standard modules the OS lot module as well as the sys module but we're not gonna that's gonna come on later on in today's code we're gonna actually continue on to the next part of the code which is actually on line 20 and let me actually get rid of this real quick so line 20 all the way to line 25 this is the exception part of the code well the exception this is one way to actually do exceptions within Python and you're gonna actually see a couple of different variant 
couple of different ways to actually implement exceptions within Python. The main gist is that you're essentially you have a block of co code inside of this try where we're going to have Python try implementing this block of code and it's going to go line by line inside of this block. If any if for any reason any part of this code were to cause an error, this try would become false and then continue on to this accept and then you specify the exact error message that you want to actually overcome or essentially hop over but you're going to but you have to actually acknowledge it. And the way that we're going to actually do it. So now that I've essentially gotten the gist of what exceptions are inside of this one section of the code, why don't we go over what's going to happen in this block? So you're going to notice while true. While true is actually Python's way of creating infinite loop cuz we we want the user to actually keep on trying to actually get the code to work until they actually implement a string that's equivalent to what we need. We need an integer to be implemented, not a character, so it's going to keep on going and going and going. All right? So that's why we picked that while true. Now we're going to continue on to the exception where we say try and then count equals int input and the block the um prompt that we want the re the user to read and then answer accordingly. And if this count doesn't cause any errors, we're going to continue on to where the actual code breaks out of this infinite loop. For any reason, if it this count was to continue on and um, cause an error, the error that we, we know for a fact, if this line causes an error, that it's going to be this error, value error, all right? Therefore, we're going to say accept value error. And we're going to tell the user, hey, please enter a number, not a character. And really, that's all that's going on inside of this um, class, initializer class constructor. What we're going to actually talk about next is the um, is a class, well, a function that we create, a brand new function that we create just for clean cleaning up this code. And what that is actually called oh. clear line and really what this function does. Remember at the beginning of the video, I was talking about how I Want, I really want the screen to get cleaned up so that the user has a better a better experience running our software and the way that I want to actually clean the screen is actually how we're going to do it inside this function and really what we're going to do is you're going to notice on line 31 we're going to be using a doc string same reason why I'm using a doc string is the same reason I'm using it at the top of the class and then user and it, this if essentially what we're doing is we're getting user data from um, the user and we're going to be making assessments on whether or not the user actually wants to clear out the screen and then after that you're going to notice the sys sys and os are actually the use the python standard modules they were talking about on line two and three and this is how they're go we're going to use them the system dot platform we want to we're going to use to figure out what pl uh, operating system the software is being run on. Reason being is because Windows has different commands than a Linux operating system. I didn't mention Mac because a Mac is actually built off of a Linux operating system, where Windows is built on a different operating system that's not Linux based. All right, so therefore Windows is actually going to have its own command that's different than any other operating system out on the market and that command is CLS. CLS, when you type into the terminal, it's actually going to clean out the screen. That's where this OS.System comes into play. OS.System is a method used to actually input stuff into your terminal. This isn't output, this is input. So we're gonna say if system.platform equals Win32, which is the platform, Windows ID number, and if that is true, we're gonna say OS.System, CLS. Remember to put these quotations too because those are you're not going to run the system right if it doesn't. But the CLS is going to get implemented straight into our terminal. And if this is false, it's going to go on to the next thing where it says os.system of clear. So if this doesn't make sense, what this os.system is actually doing, so we have this Thing, we have this code up on the terminal. It's I was testing it out when I was implementing that new code. I'm just going to do control C to cancel out. And what it's actually doing is it's actually typing in clear into the operating system and it's going to essentially hit enter and it's going to do the same exact thing that you all just saw right there. So that's what the os.system is doing and all the other and as well as that's what the system.platform is. I really do highly suggest going to check out the uh, Python 
the Python standard modules, there's a lot of cool stuff as well as there's a lot of different ways to actually implement this one portion of the code. If you have any other ideas, go ahead and leave it down in the comment section down below so that people have more resources into actually solving this clear. But this is not the main gist of what this video is going to be about. In the insert, we actually did use a lot of in, um a lot of exceptions and I'm going to get to that right about now. Inside the insert function, we actually use exceptions to help us out significant, significantly. Where we have before in the last video, we have the user inputting yes, and then we have them inputting the exact number and all that. We can actually disregard this whole section of this code and just have it right here. Where we don't really, it's A, less it's less time consuming for the user as well as it's less memory consu cons consumed the soft the computer isn't as much doesn't have as much memory being consumed at this time so what we're doing is we're using a try exception outside of a while loop you can use it inside outside you're going to see both methods inside of this code really today where you saw the wild truth method inside of the initializer we're going to use the try method outside of the while loop right here and we're just going to say user decision equals int of input and then user please enter the exact number you would like for this for the exact number you would like of keywords to enter if there is no exact number just hit any character and we're gonna set size equal to user alright and the reason why I'm saying that we're using exceptions to our benefit is because if this causes an error what we're gonna actually do is set user decision to none if you don't know what none is we're just taking user decision and we're pointing it to no value. It's a memory, it has a piece of memory, but it has no value inside of it. And that's going to be really important later on in today's code and the reason why I didn't use size right here. All right, but bear with me. What we're going to continue on actually is from line 58 to 63. And the same logic behind what's going on here is the same logic on what's going on in the initializer of this class. We just really want to make sure that the user is implementing characters or numbers that's not going to cause the program to crash, right? But it's the same logic as what's going on on line 20. So if you don't really fully understand it, I really do suggest going back and looking at all that stuff. But we're going to continue on to why none is so important. And that really is on line 64, where we're saying if user decision is none, we want this to whole thing to happen all right and the reason why we can't say size is none or si size equals int of input is because of how we have size right here and right here all right you can't have none and integers interchanging it's going to cause another error inside of python so the best thing to do if you want to use the none value is to have a none value on its own where we're only evaluating if that none value is on its own I mean, if that value is none or not. All right. And with that being said, we're going to continue on to the rest of this where use a decision equals input. Notice I use use a decision here and use a decision here. All right. I could have changed these values, but instead what I did was I just checked to see if use a decision dot upper is no. All right. It's not. So therefore, for the else, we can set use a decision back to none, causing this whole statement to be true again once the code gets back to it in this while loop. If this user decision is not none, we're going to continue on to size equals count plus one, size is greater than zero. Really all of this stuff is the same as what was going on in last week's video. If you have not checked out last week's video, I highly suggest going to check it out. There should be a link right up above on the screen right about now. Go check it out. You'll learn a lot. And then the last thing we're going to talk about is the driver the only thing I added was the clean line. So essentially what's going to happen, let me actually bring this out. They get me. So we're going to have, we're going to run the main like you all saw from Islander import helper key equals helper. So this is the initializer. Once the initializer is done, it's going to go on to the driver. So this whole function and we want to add, this is where I chose. Again, when you actually have your hands on this code, you can go ahead and change this however you want. But I want clear line right before insert. So soon as this main calls the dot driver method, it's going to get rerouted from here all the way up to clear line. And then it's going to be you're, the user is going to be asked if you want to clean the screen or not. And then once that's done, it's going to go to the insert. 
causing us the ability to actually run the code like this. So let's do Python 3 main dot pi, hit enter. With all that being said, the database you'll be using, what, all right, so let's enter a character right here. Please enter a number, not a character. All right, so let's hit one. All right, and then let's say tube. Please type yes to clear the screen, otherwise any key to continue. So let's just type in yes. All right, it cleared the screen just like that. And it's become, this code is essentially becoming a lot easier on the user. If you think, if you, if you disagree with me, go ahead and leave it down in the comment section down below. If you agree with me and you actually enjoy the way that I implemented this code, please go ahead and hit that like button. It really does help support this channel. But we're going to continue on with other aspects of what we actually just implemented. Hello, YouTuber. Now that you have the databases that you'll be using, don't, why don't we start implementing some code, well, some keywords. If you have, if you do not have a specific, well, right here, this is that, this is that input value we had. Enter the specific number of keywords you would like to enter. Now notice it's the new line. That is because of this backslash n, all right? Backslash n, when you have it inside of a print statement, it's gonna cause it to be a new line. And that's why it goes, if you do not have a specific, well, it goes new, new line right here. If you do not have a specific number of keywords you would like to enter, press any key, press any character. So we're just going to say Q, all right, enter. What keyword would you like to enter? Let's say Bob, what is the value, two, Please type no. The reason why I have this no thing, again, go check out last week's video. We're just gonna press any key. We're gonna say will 100, and we're gonna say no. And then it's gonna continue on. Let's just run it one more time so you can see the other ways to actually implement this. So let's just say one, tube, type yes. So let's just do any key. It's gonna, notice it didn't clear. And that's a good thing, that's exactly what we want. If you do not have a specific number of keywords you'd like to enter, let's just say three. And then say Bob, two, Bob, five, Will, 100. All right, and seems you have reached your keyword. All right, Islanders, that's all I have for today's video. All the code from today's video will be down in the description bar down below as well as a bunch of other cool perks that you Islanders get access to. All right. So if you have any questions, please go ahead and leave it down in the comment section down below. And if you enjoyed today's video, please do consider hitting that like button. It really does help support this channel. Not only tell me what's going that you are all enjoying the content that you're all seeing as well as it helps YouTube to know that you're all enjoying my content. All right. And if you're not yet subscribed, please do consider hitting that subscription button as well as that bell icon so you can notify when I post my next video, which will actually be about that Colorama. And I'm really proud on what we will be able to accomplish with this Colorama script that we've all created. Well, we've all created. And until next week, bye. I'll see you all. Happy coding.